Welcome back to Third Phase of Moon. Blake Cousins here along with my brother Brent. We've got the videos that have just come into our email, our Facebook, and Twitter. And we're going to be sharing them with you tonight. So buckle up, everybody. We've got a wild ride for you. So let's just start it off with videos that have been coming in. Let's just roll the first one right now of what looks to be some kind of battlefield and new technology, weaponry uh, that we're looking at right now. We see two soldiers or whatever they are, whatever they're doing, they're the bad guys, it seems like. And they're in hot trouble right now. We see new technologies, this weapon, whatever it is, there's trace fire and it is defying physics as it seems to twirl around and come from the direction it just came from. What kind of technology is behind this weaponry? Uh, right now we can see they're ducking, they're dodging, they're running. And this thing seems to be tracking its every maneuver and returns back almost like a boomerang. Brett, what's your thoughts here? Yeah, could this be like hypersonic uh, super drones that basically could come in in an instant and basically get a grab on a lock and then instantly zip away? It almost looks like that. Then we see other kind of trace fire kind of react as soon as this other object appears and then just gets out of scene. Uh, what's going on here? Uh, you can see the guys, these people, the soldiers, if that's what they are, react to what happened. And it, it seems like they almost... Uh, got spared there for a second it seemed like this object whatever it was seemed like is on a reconnaissance mission yeah maybe not so much to uh eliminate the the enemy if that's what these are uh, we're not exactly sure even the source or if this footage is manipulated but right now we're looking at it and it seems authentic but again we're not exactly sure we're just putting it out there it came to our email and we thought we'd share it and uh, get your opinions right here in the live premiere and i'm sure we got a lot of people in the military watching or former veterans that uh, could tell us a little bit about trajectory in regards to trace fire and what we're seeing here because it doesn't seem conventional in my opinion this thing is uh, defying uh, the regular ways of arsenal that we're not accustomed to what what's going on here the defined twist and turns that this uh bullet if that's what it is a smart bullet uh, i'm not sure what we're looking at but it is extraordinary so again we're bringing the evidence we don't know a lot of the times what's going on we don't claim to be experts we just claim that we're putting it out as fast as possible and we're expertise in doing that so let's bring in the next video coming in from a train cam. Take a look at this. So we're looking at this again, and did you see whatever this golden sphere just did? It moves and again, twists and turns, vanishes from sight and then reappears and then takes off at extraordinary rates of speed. And it just so happens to be captured by this train as it's passing by. These are the anomalies that we see once in a great while just because of these cams that are out there shooting 24 seven. And uh, what we're looking at is interesting. Could it be something of a natural phenomenon? Brent, what's your thoughts here? Yeah, this is very interesting. I, I see it and I'm fascinated by what we're looking at. It seems to be like a phantom. It, it comes in and out of existence. It almost pops out and you see it actually drop down and it creates this motion and then it just evaporates and then it pops back into position. And th then the color we're looking at, it has this orange, yellow, kind of almost looks like this, the sun in its own aspect. And what catches me is just the way it, appears and disappears and d does these erratic movements next to this locomotive. Yeah, when we're looking at this even closer, Brent, we can see that it leaves some kind of trace, a, a trail behind it, which is interesting and indicates that this footage is authentic and I don't think it's manipulated, but you never know. But uh, again, we're looking at it very close and it looks indeed to be in frame and whatever it is, it, it was there, captured in time. Uh, we're seeing the frame rate, everything's kind of matching up. So at this point, whether this is a 
natural phenomenon or some kind of interdimensional uh, organism, dare I say. You know, it's hard to comprehend the possibilities of existence and re-existence of these beings, if you call it that, right? Yeah, you notice this this spherical object. It seems to be kind of closer to the camera. And what I noticed right there at the end, it seems to actually take off. And maybe it's uh, not just shrinking. Maybe it's going at a rapid rate of speed away from the camera and blinks out of existence. Uh, we're having a good time putting these videos out. And we got much more coming up in just a few seconds. But at this point, we just wanted to give a big shout out to everybody that's joining us in the live premiere, the support. You guys are the greatest and uh, kindly hit that thumbs up. Now, let's get to this next video right now of what looks to be some kind of craft in the sky. At first, I thought it was a drone, but after some enhancement, we see something else. Watch this. So we see a series of red lights that appears to be a craft, a large craft, not individual lights, but indeed, in my opinion, something large in the sky just hovering there. And as we're getting a closer look at it, and as we're getting a closer look at it, uh, we can see that it has some kind of structure, but we're not seeing any kind of indication of FAA lights, if it were some kind of blimp or airship, this is something uh, large and it's just hanging there. And from the eyewitness themselves, they're stating it didn't make a noise. And if this were a drone and it's this large or a helicopter, it'd be making all kinds of noise. This, this thing's something different. Brent, what's your thoughts here? Yeah, it seems pretty close uh, proximity to the person that actually captured this. And to have this object that close, you would definitely hear it. If it's especially that size, it would emit a sound. So I'm ruling out a drone. We're looking at it and we see these three lights. They're red. And what what's very curious is we see an object supporting the lights. It seems to be one structure. This is an interesting sighting. I like this. Some people ask if these were extraterrestrial and they wanted to hide, why do some of these craft uh, reveal themselves by these lights? And that's a good question. But over the years, people have stated when they witness a UFO, there is lights that accompany the vehicle. They're attached to it. And when we witness the TR-3B itself, they're indicators of the three lights and the center light. So. What's going on here? It's hard to tell. Maybe they're not hiding anymore. Maybe they're wanting to come out in the open and reveal themselves. But whatever this thing is, in my opinion, it's at least 20 to maybe 30 feet in length here. So it's, it's quite large. And to be hovering like that over a neighborhood, it, it's a little scary to, to tell you the truth. But maybe they're trying to make contact. Now, we're looking at these videos and... Like I said, we got more of them. So let's just roll the next one right now. Take a look at it. So you got the sheriff department in hot pursuit presses the brakes as he notices something well it appears to be that way what is the object that we're looking at um we received this earlier it's coming in close to camp pendleton and the eyewitnesses stated that they witnessed this thing from a distance it was sparkling pretty bright in the sky in a greenish hue of light as it got closer it seemed as they looked to their left and the sheriff department stepped on it and then pressed the brakes as it got closer to whatever this thing is we're looking at this and we're going to enhance it and right now i'm kind of looking at this thing it almost seems organic at the moment brent your thoughts here yeah i'm glad that uh, this was submitted this close-up really gives us some detail even though the picture quality is a little soft we see this tail kind of wispy behind kind of the nodule that's that's supporting it up in the sky could this just be 
a kite up there. Uh, it's heathered from the ground. It seems pretty high up there, and it's pretty windy that day, it appears. And we do receive these kind of videos. And as I'm getting a little closer on this, I'm having to agree with you, Brian. I'm more inclined to think that this is a kite in the sky. It's a good submission. We want to see everything that comes into third phase moon and together we kind of find out sometimes what is in the sky and sometimes we don't and uh, that's why we're here we're wanting to get to the bottom of it all everything and right now again our opinions on this is most likely it's a kite if you've guys seen anything like this you let us know and again your thoughts now let's get to the next video this is pretty crazy stuff coming from Popocatépetl, mexico the volcano is active again Take a look at these videos, they're magnificent. So here we go again, Brent. We're looking at these things and they are on a daily basis, it seems. The UFO activity around this volcanic monster, if that's what you call it, is on the rise. Brent, what's your thoughts here? Yeah, Popocatepetl is like amazing. It just seems to go off with volcanic and uh, UFO activity. It, it's just like, it's a repetition. Every week we're putting up magnificent f uh, footage, like you just said, Blake of UFOs that seem to have a, a symbiote relationship with the caldera itself. It, it seems to visit it on a frequent basis. Look at the speed and the illuminance of this object. It's very bright and it has this kind of idea where it wants to go. It seems that it's intelligent. Yeah, Brett, over these past few weeks in this region of South America, and this volcano in particular seems to be a magnet for this kind of activity. And what we're looking at, we can easily roll out aircraft, conventional. These aren't drones. These aren't airplanes. They're not helicopters. And I don't think they're meteorites or shooting stars either. These are different. They're coming from sometimes out of the caldera itself. These objects, whatever they are, seems to be some kind of phenomenon that needs to be studied a little bit more. Volcanologists might say it is an atmospheric ph phenomenon due to the fact of a static charge. Um, seismic activity could create a static charge, but I'm ruling that out as well. This seems more organic and lifelike. Some kind of harness of the energy from the volcano. This is pretty incredible stuff right here. Yeah, the best part, not only do we get footage from uh, nighttime, including daytime, it, it seems to be happening on a 24-7 at this particular volcano. And the activity over there, it, it's nonstop. What's really going on? And that's a big question around the planet. Volcanoes seem to be a magnet for UFOs. It, it, it's just outstanding. Absolutely. And if you're, again, enjoying this, give us that big thumbs up because we've got another one for you. And this is coming in from Los Angeles. Is this a massive mothership that has made its appearance over the major city itself? Take a look at this video. It doesn't last long, but there's something organic about it as well. This thing pops it, and it morphs and it changes shape into a classic disc that you would see in a movie. Uh, we're adding some brightness contrast and we're not seeing any kind of FAA lights. We're looking and hoping that we're going to get more videos. Apparently, this was captured just earlier today, and we're reporting it to you within hours right here at Third Phase of Moon. Brent, what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, very cool. You can see that it's definitely a structure, and it seems to be just standing steady where it's at. I can see the trees. It's blowing, and it's kind of whipping. There's a lot of breeze, and for this thing to be so stationary is pretty unique. I, I like the way we see it, and it, it does this kind of maybe a rotation or just a morph and then it kind of bleeds into this interesting white colored like disc where in fact earlier it looked like it was a black shadowed disc it, it's an interesting aspect to this sighting yeah at one point it's illuminated and then at one point it it has this dark color but we're not seeing any indication of a gondola underneath or any kind of fin up, up on top that you would see in a blimp uh, this seems definitely 
disc shape or cigar shape and very rigid in its performance and in its design. So what is this, guys? I'm estimating this thing to be at least 150 feet, maybe 200 feet in length here. It's massive. We can see it off in the distance. We have reference of the palm trees itself and also power lines and birds everywhere. What's going on? Is this, again, more evidence that these these things, that they just want to show themselves to the world, Brent? Uh, last words on this. Yeah, great episode tonight. We just, we're flooded with UFO content today, and we're so happy that we could share it with you within hours of receiving this, and we're getting it out to you, the people that are so interested in this subject matter. And we just appreciate you guys joining us at Third Phase Moon and in this club right here, finding out and trying to get to the truth. Absolutely. And uh, guys, I want to get your comments in regards to uh, this footage that we just showed you tonight. Uh, there was a lot, and uh, we've got a lot more coming up in tomorrow's episode so make sure you hit that notification bell and that thumbs up tell your friends uh, you saw some crazy stuff right here at third phase moon and copy paste this link and share it on your social media get the word out and don't forget the store is open the third phase of moon merch is out and you could get it right now we got the t-shirts we got the tank tops the buckle up even the hoodies and let me tell you the quality is high 100 percent and uh People are digging it. They're purchasing it from around the world. And, and if you get the merch, take a picture of yourself and send it to us. My email is in the description, Brent. Yes, yeah, uh, we've been wearing these shirts on this road trip for the past month and a half. And I, I find them rather comfortable. You put them on and you're like, oh, this feels really good. It's form fitting and uh, it's great quality. And I love uh, representing the merch and uh, it's, it's good looking. We're just in Washington, D.C. a couple days ago and people were saying, they recognized us and i think the merch actually brought that out like you guys are third phase of moon and it was just a great time people from california to washington dc and virginia everywhere we've been uh, they recognize a t-shirt and us on this road trip is pretty exciting yeah we're even getting uh, compliments on it in arizona and uh, temecula california and uh, we're all, all over the place so we want to thank everybody for joining us tonight and the mixed teas store is open right now pick it up enjoy keep your eyes on the skies and if you've captured anything amazing out there submit it to us right here at third phase moon blake cousins we'll see you next time i think it's terrifying i mean this seems potentially like one of the biggest stories of my lifetime and i don't care if it's about ufos or whatever you call it something that we don't understand is getting very close to our military aircraft the technologies related to energy generation should come out first. This hybrid aerospace underwater craft is able to basically generate an electromagnetic field. It is uh, President Trump's belief that the United States must remain as dominant in space as we are on land and sea and the air. And your charge is to see to that mission with the United States Space Force. I mean, there were three people on my team assassinated, and I was almost killed. With a lot of people that would like to know what's going on. It's a matter of national security. But apparently, just recovered are off-world vehicles not made on this Earth. The president will respond to the subject the way they want them to. There's a black box with all the technologies that would give us a civilization that's sustainable, peaceful, etc., and that's been around for decades. Everybody's asking the biggest question in the world. Are we alone? Look, it's holding, it's that just stalled strange. out there. The narrative that's being launched, which is a false narrative, is that we're not alone and that those civilizations are a threat. The problem is, is that the public has to be informed and involved. Uh, it could be a brief statement saying, hallelujah, I'm, you know, I'm finally vindicated. I don't, I, I'm not completely convinced they're gonna let this like it is. With the people who are surrounding that level of, of our politicians and government are not told. Like the movie Independence Day, where we'll say, let's go kick alien butt.